In at number 10 is the Moser. It is a powerful aquatic mount. The Mosasaurus is a massive, powerful aquatic dinosaur that serves as an exceptional underwater mount. It has high health, stamina, and damage output, making it a formidable force in underwater combat. Underwater exploration, with its ability to navigate underwater depths, the Mosasaurus allows players to explore the ocean depths safely. It can travel quickly and cover vast distances underwater, which is particularly useful for reaching underwater caves and high resource rich areas. And for combat superiority, the Mosas high base damage and health make it a dominant force against other aquatic creatures, including other formidable predators like the Plesiosaur or the Lezichthys. This makes it a valuable asset for defending underwater bases or engaging in underwater battles. Right, next up we have the Uteranus, and the main good thing about this is its leadership roar. The Uteranus has a special ability called the Courage Roar or Fear Roar. When it roars, it gives a buff to nearby allied creatures, boosting their attack power and resistance to fear effects. This can be incredibly useful in battles or when taming other creatures, making them stronger and more resilient. Then they also have utility in battles, due to which Courage Roar ability, the Uteranus becomes a valuable asset in battles against other creatures or players. The buff it provides to nearby creatures can turn the tide in challenging encounters, making it a significant asset in PvP, player versus player, or PvE, player versus environment scenarios. It also plays a role in taming assistance. When taming other creatures, especially those that are difficult or have torpor inducing effect, the Uteranus can help by buffing the taming creature's damage output and resistance, making the taming process safer and faster. While the Uteranus can't fly, it can be ridden and controlled, its decent speed and ability to provide buffs while being riding make it a versatile and valuable mount for various situations. And it also has pack buffs when used in conjunction with other creatures, the Uteranus' buffs can stack onto other pack leader creatures, amplifying the bonuses give to the allied creatures, creating a formidable force. Next up we have the RG. Firstly, to do with transportation, the RG has a decent flight speed and stamina, making it a reliable creature for transportation. It can carry out a considerable amount of weight, allowing players to transport resources, creatures, or even other smaller dinosaurs across long distances. Combat Utility While not the most powerful combat creature, the RG is quite effective in battles due to its decent health pool, stamina, and melee damage. Its ability to fly allows it to attack from the air, making it useful for hunting, defending, or even assisting in taming other creatures. Resource Gathering Argentavis can be trained to harvest various resources efficiently. They're particularly good at gathering renewable resources such as hide, meat, and organic polymer from certain creatures. With their ability to carry large amounts, they can expedite resource gathering trips. Its ability to carry other creatures in its talent makes it useful for taming or relocating smaller creatures. This feature is especially handy when players want to tame creatures in challenging or dangerous areas and then transport them to a safer location for taming. Accessibility The RG is relatively easier to obtain compared to some of the other flying creatures in the game. They are commonly found in various regions that can be tamed using a variety of foods, making them accessible for players at different levels. And base defense and utility Due to their decent combat capabilities, Argentavis can be trained and used to defend a base or assist in resource gathering around the player's settlements, providing them an extra layer of security. In at number 7 is the Theri, and the first thing we can say is its gathering efficiency. One of the primary reasons for the Therizinosaur's popularity is its outstanding gathering capabilities. It excels at gathering a wide variety of resources such as wood, thatch, fibre, berries, and rare flowers efficiently. This makes it a valuable asset for resource gathering, especially for wood and thatch, which are essential building materials. Combat prowess. The Therizinosaur is a formidable combatant with high base damage and a rapid attack rate. When properly leveled and equipped, it can be effective in both defensive and offensive roles. Its ability to gather resources also makes it easier to collect the materials needed for saddles and gear, enhancing its combat capabilities further. To do a decent health and versatility, Therizinosaurs have a good base health pool, making them durable in battles, and additionally, they can be bred for higher stats, making them even more resilient. Their versatility in both gathering and combat makes them a desirable choice for many players. 
Herbivore and Berry Gathering. With its ability to efficiently gather berries, the Therizinosaur becomes valuable for players needing large quantities of berries for taming herbivores, creatures, or crafting consumables. Kibble Production. They have the ability to collect large amounts of eggs from various creatures, making them ideal for egg farming and kibble production. Kibble is an important resource for efficiently taming higher tier creatures. In at number 6 we have the Spino. It is a powerful all-rounder. The Spinosaurus is a well-rounded creature with a high base damage, health and speed. Its versatile stats make it effective in various situations including combat, resource gathering and exploration. It is an excellent swimmer. Spinos are able to move swiftly through waterways and traverse both shallow and deeper waters without issue. This amphibious nature allows them to excel in aquatic environments and explore underwater areas. The gathering capability makes them a proficient gatherer, especially for specific resources like meat and hide. Their attacks yield substantial amounts of meat and hide from any creatures that they defeat, making them a valuable for collecting these resources efficiently. They also have combat superiority, again, spawners are powerful combatants with a unique attack animation that covers a wide area, allowing them to deal damage to multiple enemies at once. Their high base health makes them formidable opponents in battles against both land and aquatic creatures. Also, they have accessibility and a taming ease. A Spino can be found in various regions across the Ark map, making them very relatively accessible to any kind of Ark player. While they might require some effort to tame during their strength, they can be tamed using meat, fish, and become valuable assets once tamed. Despite their large size, Spinos move relatively quickly, both in land and in water. This agility allows players to maneuver effectively during combat or exploration, making them useful for traveling across different terrains. And Spinos are often used in boss fights due to their high damage output and durability. Their versatility makes them suitable for various boss encounters, adding to their value in high end game content. Overall, the Spinosaurus's combination of high stats, versatility, speed, combat prowess, and resource gathering abilities make it highly sought after and value and a valuable creature in Ark Survival Evolved for both solo players and tribes. In at number 5 we have the Megalodon, and the main thing they have is the Megalodons are relatively fast underwater and have good stamina. They allow players to explore the ocean depths and travel across water bodies efficiently. They can serve as reliable mounts for underwater exploration due to their speed and maneuverability. Also, in the early to mid stages of the game, before obtaining higher tier aquatic mounts like the Moza or the Plesio, the Megalodon can be a valuable aquatic mount due to its moderate strength, ease of taming and availability in various parts of the map. However, compared to some of the larger aquatic creatures like the Mosasaurus or the Plesiosaur, the Megalodon might lack in raw power and durability that the higher tier creatures possess. As players gain progress in the game, they might not opt for a less potent creature like the Megalodon. So why AI did you put this thing in at number 5 and the Moser in at number 10? You really don't make sense. Well, ultimately, the Megalodon might not be as powerful as some other aquatic creatures, but its speed, accessibility, and early game utility make it, like, the best... The, the, it says the the best ocean tame. Next up, we have the Golem or the Rock Elemental. And the main thing they have is durability and tankiness. Rock Elementals can possess an incredibly high base health pool and natural armor, being the one of the most resilient creatures in the game. They can absorb a significant amount of damage from both creatures and structures, serving as formidable tanks in battles or as defenders for bases. They also are potent attackers capable of dealing substantial damage to both creatures and structures. Their rock throwing ability allows them to attack enemies from a distance, making them an effective siege creature in raiding scenarios. They also have the ability to gather large quantities of stone and similar resources by smacking rocks with their attacks. This makes them invaluable for resource gathering, especially for stone, flint and metal, which are essential for crafting and building. Placing a rock elemental within a base can act as significant deterrent for a potential, a potential, potential attackers. Their immense health pool and damage output make them powerful defenders against raiders or hostile creatures. In PvP scenarios, golems are highly sought after for their ability to deal significant damage to enemy structures. Their rock throwing attack allows them to damage structures from a distance, making them effective siege creatures in raids. However, its movement speed is a bit of a downside. In at number 3, we have the Quetz. It is an aerial platform. The Quetzal serves as a flying platform capable of carrying massive amounts 
amount of weight on its platform saddle, which allows players to build structures on its back, essentially turning it into a mobile base. This feature is invaluable for base building, resource transportation, and mobile operations. It also is very versatile. The Quetzal's combination of flying ability, high weight capacity, and the platform saddle makes it one of the most versatile creatures in the game. It can be utilized for various tasks, including base building, resource gathering, taming, combat, and transportation. Due to this exceptional versatility and usefulness across multiple aspects of gameplay, the Quetzal is a highly prized and sought after art creature by many, many players and tribes in the Ark Survival Evolved game. And its unique abilities serve as a mobile platform, carry other creatures, transport heavy loads and engage in combat, make it an indispensable asset in the game. What a lovely thing to say about a creature this slow. In at number two, we have the Giga. The Giganotosaurus boasts incredibly high base damage and health stats, making it one of the strongest land creatures in the game. Its damage output surpasses most other creatures, allowing it to decimate opponents quickly. Gigas are highly sought after in PvP scenarios due to their devastating combat abilities. They can deal massive damage to structures and creatures, making them an exceptional siege creature during raids or base defenses. Gigas are massive creatures, instilling fear in both players and AI-controlled creatures. Their large size and aggressive nature makes them formidable adversaries in battles and excellent deterrents for potential attackers. Also, despite their immense strength, to strength, strength, I should have said. Gigas are also efficient gatherers, particularly for meat and hide. Their attacks yield substantial amounts of resources from the creatures they defeat, making them very useful for harvesting. Gigas are often considered endgame creatures due to their power level, and they can play a significant role in late game activities, including raiding, boss battles, and establishing dominance on the server. Overall, the Giganosaurus's unparalleled strength, combat prowess, intimidation factor, and significance in the endgame content make it highly sought after and a feared creature in Ark Survival Evolved, often playing a crucial role in dominating the game's landscape. And in at number one is the Rex. Rexes possess high base health and damage stats, making them formidable fighters. They are strong attackers and can deal significant damage to both creatures and structures, making them excellent combat mounts. Due to their strength and health, Rexes are often used in various combat scenarios, including hunting, other creatures, defending bases, engaging in boss fights, or raiding enemy bases. Their high damage output makes them valuable assets in confrontations. Rexes are relatively easier to tame compared to some of the higher other creatures, like the Giga, for example. They serve as an effective combat mount themselves and can also be used to assist in taming other creatures due to their strength and damage output. Rexes are commonly used in boss fights due to their high damage output, durability and effectiveness against bosses in caves or arenas. They're often a crucial part of strategies for taking down challenging boss creatures in Ark. Rexes can be found in various regions across the Ark map, making them relatively accessible for taming. Players can encounter them in many different biomes and the relatively straightforward taming process makes them available for players at different Different stages of the game. When multiple Rexes are present, they gain a pack bonus that increases their damage outputs, making them even more lethal in battles. This pack boost can significantly enhance effectiveness in group combat scenarios. In both PvP and PvE situations, Rexes are highly valued for their combat capabilities. They can be used for base defense, raiding, battling other players or tribes, and dominating the game's environment. While not specialized gatherers, the Rexes can collect decent amount of hide, meat, and keratin from creatures they defeat, making them useful for resource gathering. Overall, the Rexes' combination of high health, damage uh, output, accessibility, ease of taming, versatility, and various gameplay scenarios makes it one of the sought-after arc creatures. Not really sure about that pack buff, though. In at number 10, we have the Microraptors. Firstly, the Microraptor does not deal significant damage, especially when compared to other creatures of similar size or role. They are relatively fragile and can be easily killed in combat, making them less useful as a combat mount or ally. Microraptors can only be ridden by a single person, limiting their utility for transportation or combat compared to larger creatures that carry multiple riders. Can't ride this thing, so overall they're difficult to tame, they have limited utility, and a single rider mount. What what are you doing, AI? You you can't ride these things. Look how tiny they are. Right, we have the Chalicotherium, and while the Chalicotherium 
has range attacks with its boulder throwing ability, its damage output isn't as high as some other creatures of a similar size in direct combat. It may not excel against stronger opponents. The boulder throwing attack has a slow firing rate, making it less effective in fast paced battles or against agile enemies. Its movement speed is relatively slow compared to some other creatures which can make it less desirable for transportation or quick travel. There are herbivores that prefer beer as their preferred taming food, which might be more challenging or time consuming to obtain compared to some other foods. While they can gather loads of thatch and wood with their attacks, there are other creatures which are more efficient at those tasks. So overall, the Chalica Theorem is often perceived as less versatile or useful in various situations compared to other teams available in the game. However, its unique abilities and appearance still might be appealing for players with specific preferences or those looking for a different team experience. Now, just from personal experience here, yes, the beer is a little bit of an odd thing to tame it with, but if you learn that boulder ability, it can be an extremely useful one and its damage and movement speed, as far as I'm concerned, are pretty good. So AI, I think you got it a little bit wrong on that one. But overall, I guess it kind of makes sense why this creature's on the list. Next up, we have the Oviraptor. And firstly, they're not strong combat creatures, and they lack significant offense or defense capabilities, making them less useful in battles compared to other tames. And also, the primary benefit of an Oviraptor is the ability to increase nearby egg laying speed and reduce egg incubation time allowed for dinos. However, this utility might not be as essential in every player's gameplay style or progression. Overall, Oviraptors might seem less desirable for players focused on combat oriented creatures or those looking for tents with broader utility beyond egg related benefits. However, they can still be useful for players focusing on breeding and egg production as it can significantly speed up egg leg incubation processes for nearby dinosaurs. In at number 7, we have the Ichthyosaurus. Firstly, it lacks significant combat abilities and strength. They're not powerful in combat situations and can be easily overwhelmed by stronger predators. They have relatively low health and defense stats, making them vulnerable to attacks, especially from larger and more aggressive ocean creatures. Ichthyosaurus is an aquatic creature and cannot survive on land. This limitation restricts their utility compared to other creatures which can move on both land and in water. They also have a limited carry weight, which means they can't transport much inventory for resources, reducing their ability for hauling items. And while they're decently fast underwater, their speed may not be sufficient to outrun some of the faster ocean predators. Overall, the Ichthyosaurus's limitation in combat, survivability, and restricted mobility make them less versatile compared to some other aquatic creatures like Megalodons or Mosasaurs, which possess better combat abilities, higher health, and greater utility both underwater and on the surface. However, their smaller side and speed can make them suitable for quick underwater transportation for players in the early stages of the game, or specific tasks requiring maneuverability in aquatic environments. Also, just does the, the AI think that Megalodons can go on land? Because Megalodons don't really have greater utility on the surface. I don't I don't really know what it means by that. Next up, we have the Carb Enemies. And while it has decent health and can soak up damage, its offensive capabilities are relatively weak compared to other creatures of similar size. It may take longer to defeat enemies in combat. The Carb Enemies is relatively slow on both land and water. Its sluggish movement makes it less efficient for transportation compared to faster creatures. It has a unique ability to gather large amounts of berries and thatch which can be useful early in game, however as players progress other creatures or tools become more efficient at resource gathering tasks. Despite its high health pull, it lacks the speed to evade threats, making it vulnerable to faster predators. While it has a saddle and can carry items, its low movement speed and carry weight limit its use for transporting resources. Due to these reasons, the carb enemies might be perceived as less versatile compared to other teams that offer better combat abilities, faster movement, or specialized utility. However, its high health and resource gathering abilities can still make it useful in specific situations, especially for newer players or for tasks where its unique capabilities are beneficial. So, like, why AI are you putting this on the, the worst art creatures list? And you're kind of, you're going back on all the points here. And I don't know why it wants every creature to be really good at combat. Because not every creature is going to be good at combat. And you don't need good combat creatures for everything. I don't know why AI is always just like, oh yeah, the reason why it's bad, 
can't do damage, can't go that fast, can't carry as many resources. Because they, they, the Ichthyosaurus, great mobility, I don't really know what I was talking about there. And with the Cobb enemies, it's pretty good at transporting resources, it's got a very decent weight stack. In at number 5 is the Paki. And the first thing, it has a charging attack which can stun smaller creatures and knock back enemies. Its damage output and effectiveness in combat against larger and more powerful creatures are relatively low though, and this makes it less useful in more challenging battles. Pachys have relatively low health and are not very durable compared to many other creatures. This makes them vulnerable in combat situations, especially against other stronger opponents. Beyond its charge attack and some minor gathering abilities such as collecting thatch, Pachys do not offer diverse or significant utility compared to some other tames. While they're relatively fast on land, their speed may not be sufficient for efficient transportation compared to other faster creatures available in the game. Packies are small creatures with limited carrying capacity, which can make them less practical for holding large amounts of resources. Due to these factors, the Paki is often perceived as less versatile or less useful in various situations compared to other tames available in the game. I feel like it says that sentence a lot by the way. However, some players might still find them interesting or useful for specific tasks or personal preferences, especially in the early stages of the game. I just feel like that ending part for most of the, these creatures are just like, well, they can still be useful for specific players. Maybe not with the Paki though. In at number 4 we have the Dimorphodon, and before we get any further, I completely disagree with this placement. Dimorphodons are small and relatively fragile creatures, they can be easily killed in combat situations due to their low health and defence, making them very vulnerable to attacks. While they can be effective in groups due to their ability to swarm enemies and deal damage collectively, individually their attack power and survivability are quite low. So due to these factors, they're perceived as less versatile or less useful. With, no, these things are amazing. They deal so much damage and they deal rider damage even if they're on a mount. It's amazing. Right, this may not be Syntex favourite, but in at number three we have the Galley. The Galley has weak combat abilities and relatively low health, making it unsuitable for fighting against most predators in the game. It's more of a passive non-combative creature. It's relatively fragile and can be easily killed by larger predators if it gets into combat situations, further limiting its survivability. While it has decent speed, its carrying capacity is limited. This makes it less efficient for transporting resources compared to other creatures that are faster and can carry more. And um, like the, the, the galley's carry weight actually isn't that bad when I think about it. And what creatures are really fast in the galley on land? Yes, fly is faster, but on land this thing is, is one of the fastest out there. So a bit a bit off with that one in my opinion it's also a herbivore so it lacks the ability to gather resources efficiently unlike some other creatures that excel at gathering specific resources okay a bit of a useless point either way the main advantage to the galley is its speed which makes it one of the fastest land creatures in the game however its speed might not compensate for its lack of combat ability or utility for some players needs you're not going to tame the galley if you want a combat creature you can tell they're wimpy at combat just from their design and just how little health they have like if you use trank arrows on this thing most of the time you're just gonna kill it like end of so you kind of want trank darts for it so end of really their health is wimpy you're not even taming that for that you're taming it for the speed and because syntax told you to Either way, due to the reasons the Gallimimus may be perceived as less versatile or less useful in various situations, again the AI is saying this, the same thing at the end, so I'm not going to reiterate. The galley is in at number three, I guess. In at number two, we have the Pego, the first one which, you know, I actually agree with this one. The Pego has a unique ability to steal items from players from their inventories. This can be highly frustrating for players as it might steal valuable or essential items, making it an annoyance rather than a beneficial tame. Also, just to add a point, sometimes, like pretty much all of my Pego tames have been on accident when I've had berries in my last slot. Anyone else out there as well? You only tame these things on accident. You don't actually go out and tame these things. At least, I hope you don't. Don't do that. While they can attack and defend themselves to some extent, their combat abilities are relatively weak compared to other creatures. They are easily killed by stronger predators. Also, they're small creatures with low health and low defense. They can be easily killed by larger predators. They can be challenging to tame due to their small size, fast movement, and tendency to flee when attacked. You don't knock these things out. They're so easy to tame. Just put berries in the last slot on your hotbar and go up to one. It will pounce at you. Boom. 
tamed maybe you have to do that a couple of times it's really not that difficult and also they don't offer much utility beyond their theft ability compared to some other tames they lack significant gathering abilities or combat prowess making them less desirable for various tasks also when recording this b-roll i never realized that when you set a pego on wandering it would actually gather berries i don't know that was, that was something that surprised me today did it surprise you today because I, I didn't know Pegos did that. And in at number one, we have the Dodo. Why did you do this, AI? You were going to cause absolute havoc in the comments, by the way. Either way, Dodos have very low health, damage output, low movement speed, and they're one of the weakest creatures in the game. Beyond being one of the earliest creatures that players encounter and a source of basic resources like meat, hide, and some prime meat. Dodos, Dodos don't give prime meat. Dodos lack significant utility unless they possess any special abilities and their small size limits their carrying capacity. Also, just to add to the prime meat thing, baby Dodos do give prime meat, adult Dodos don't. Only on ASA, of course, because babies are insane prime meat farms. Also, they're easy to tame and provide a basic resource for new players. Their taming offers little advantage, though, compared to some other tames available in the game's early stages. As players progress, Dodos generally become obsolete for any significant task due to their roles and low stats of special abilities. All the way through to the late game, the Dodos are great at gathering kibble, by the way. I love the Dodo. Right, well, that was definitely something for today's video. I think it got it a little bit more wrong than the best tames, like most of them, apart from the Pego maybe shouldn't be on this list. Either way, today I get it right, and what is your least favourite arc tame? And I'll see you all later.